God bless you. I'm Evangelist Lorraine Bowman. Thank you for tuning in once again. I bring you greetings from Deliverance Press in the church. Uh, I, the address is 7223 South Ashton Avenue, Chicago, Illinois. My pastor is Pastor Connie Bowman, and I thank you for tuning in once again. I'm so happy to be with you. I want to offer up a word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, blessed Jesus, Lord God, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for this time of sharing. I thank you for a will of mine, a desire to serve you, a desire to do your will, a desire to share your word with your people, Lord. Oh, God, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto you, oh, God, for you're my strength, you're my redeemer. God, you're my help in the time of trouble. I thank you for this time. I thank you, thank you for where you brought me from. I thank you, God, for your keeping power, Lord God. If it wasn't for the Lord on my side, where would we be? I thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. And I ask that you send your word with power. Send it with demonstration, God, in the name of Jesus. If I didn't get my address, it's 7223 South Ashland, Chicago, Illinois. Pastor Connie Bowman, Pastor Bowman. I'm Evangelist Lorraine Bowman. I order services Monday night prayer at 7 o'clock. Uh, Wednesday's Bible class and prayer at 7 o'clock. Friday prayer and the ministry of the word 7.30 p.m. And uh, Sunday school starts at 9.30 a.m., followed by the morning service, the morning worship starts at 11:15 uh, a.m. on Sundays. Come by and be with us. We'll pray with you. We'll stand with you. We believe God for you. And I just want to share the word of God. People are without an excuse and about a true foundation, a true foundation. God wants you to know that there isn't a foundation. And a lot of times people want to know why is it that people fall what what is it about them they they got the prophecy down pat they got so many other things down pat what is wrong oh zion what's the matter what's the matter oh zion why is it that you can't stand why you can't stand anything what happened well oh zion what's what 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 wrong what went wrong you did run well what hindered you what i mean what what actually went wrong because you didn't have the right foundation you got to have a foundation of holiness down on the inside. And I'm going to go to 2 Timothy 2 and 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. That means if you got the foundation, it's going to stand sure. It's going to be unshakable. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. Let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. If you got the foundation of God down on the inside, unto him that's able to keep you from falling. It will stand sure. It will have a seal. When you seal something in the ground, it's sealed tight. Maybe you're not tight enough. Maybe you're not sealed tight. Maybe the seal is coming loose. Maybe you never had to seal. Maybe nobody ever taught you that holiness becometh the house of God. But listen, nevertheless, the fact, regardless of what people say, how they say, uh, 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 legalism, how they say, uh, 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 what's this here? Uh, grace, uh, oh God, greasy grace. <laughs> what Pastor called greasy grace. When you save under grace and you don't have to repent no more, you can do whatever you want to do. It's greasy grace. What Pastor called a greasy grace, where you did it from the first time, you ain't got to do it no more, and it's, it's all good. No, 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 no. What does the word of God say? The Bible says, who reports you going to believe? I'm going to believe the report of the Lord. Nevertheless, whatever they're saying, the foundation of God stands sure. Having this seal, the Lord knows them that are his. That every one, the name of the name of the part, if you're in the name of the name of Christ, you come from sin. You stop it. You quit it. God stop it. Unto him that's able, the seed of God. He said the seed, which is the word of God, remains in you. And you cannot sin because you're born of God. It's like when you desire to go, mm, and you know what? Which was some of us, some of the worst sinners. I was the worst of my family. <laughs> my mama said prayer couldn't help me.
because I was the worst one. Everything you think of that people did, I ain't gonna say I did everything, but I did a whole lot of stuff. And I just had to, couldn't help us. Till one day that word of God came and touched my life. And when it touched my life, hmm, I could not sin. It's just like, when I desire to do evil, I said, what's going on? I, I, I used to go to the lounge around this time. I don't be, uh, 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 I used to, I used to wake up getting high. I used to, used to smoke cigarettes. I used to do all this stuff. But mm, what happened? If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. When you in Christ Jesus, guess what? That stuff drop off you like what off a duck's back. They talk about what off a duck's back. You're supposed to let things, what people say, drop off of you. But when you really live in Christ, Guess what? The old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knows them that he is. Let every man that name of the name of the Christ depart from iniquity. First Corinthians 9, 6 and 9, know you not that the unrighteous. Here we go, right here. Know you not that the unrighteous. People are saying that they can do any and everything. They can be under grace. They can be under greasy grace. I wish I knew, uh, oh God, grace. This lady, these ladies came to my church. I hope you see this tape and come back to the church come back to my church. You said your pastor was 10 years, he was preaching holiness and he got away from it because he realized that under this grace, this type of grace, that you repent one time in life and that's it, no more. You, you, you in heaven, you made to heaven, so not oh, no holes by, do what you want to, run to the lounge, do what you want to, have yourself a ball, just, just wine and dine and do it till, till, till you drop off. But that's contrary to the will of God because listen, the word of God it's you got to go with what the word said. You cannot, the Bible says, whose report are you going to believe? You got to believe the report of the Lord. You got to know what the word of God says. Listen, uh, in the last days, what's going to judge us? This word of God is, I'm not going to believe what the man said. He goes, he's going to be there probably standing on the side saying what he said. But what did the word of God says? The word of God been tried and true. This is what God requires of us. First Corinthians 6 and 9, let me go to it. Hmm. No, you're not the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. I don't care what you think, what you say, why they do, what they come up with. This is the book that I'm going to bank my life on. That's the word of God. The sure word of prophecy is right here. I ain't, I ain't banking. Okay, they said, put your money where your mouth is. Bank on this. I'm banking on the sure word of prophecy, which is the word of God. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. He said, you take one jot or one tittle from the word of God, you take it out of the, your portion out of the, the book of life. When you go before God, he's going to take it out of the book of life because if you take it away from the word of God, be not deceived. Neither fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, feminists, fusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, or violence, distortions shall inherit the kingdom of God. It's plainly written. It's plainly written. And such were some of you. That were is past tense. But didn't you do it? Didn't you do it? Yes, I did. But that was then. This is now. Because if any man be in Christ, I'm a new creature. And the old things are passed away. That's why I can relate to you. that come into church because such was. I did that. I did, I, did, I did get a boyfriend. I did do things contrary to the will of God. Some things, the Bible says it's a shame to speak of some things <laughs> which were done of me in darkness. <laughs> oh, God. I think about one lady came to church saying something contrary. It was, it was, it was way off the chain. Way, way, way off, way off the chain. She should, she should have kind of kept that one with all she did. You know, some things, some things it's a shame to speak of that you did in darkness. Some things just... Let's just let it between you and God. So, but anyway, here or there, because then you will make it where the man, they say, oh, oh, I don't want to marry her, you know, because, you know, it was just so, 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 but you know, but that's okay. If you feel that that's going to get you over and testify and you don't want to be married ever again, don't ever, that's okay. But you know what? Nevertheless, let's go to that. As such were some of you, but now you are washed, you are sanctified, you are justified in the name of the Lord by the spirit of our God. Amen. So see, God will cleanse, cleanse us. He'll make us over. He'll make us holy. And you know what you got to ask God? And as, if, if you come to a place where you feel like you can't, God can purge you. He can cleanse you. Thank you, Father. Let me tell you about purging. 
there's a movie out, and I know you know, there's, they're talking about purging. And the movie is saying that they give the people 24 hours to purge themselves from everything that they've done. Don't worry about the police saying anything, doing anything. It's purge one, purge two, purge three, and they got purged on Independence Day, right after the election. You can kill, you can do whatever you want, and guess what? You get it all out your system, and you ain't got to worry about being arrested. You can go get in your car and drive home and go to sleep because you purge yourself. The movie is called Purge. Now look at that. They can tell you about purging, and they're telling you exactly what purging is, and this is what this scripture says. 2 Timothy 2 and 21, if any man purge himself from these. So he's telling you to get rid of all that stuff. Don't go and kill somebody. <laughs> Don't go and kill another man. Don't go and kill another woman's husband. Don't go killing this or that, doing this, because people are saying purge. Oh my God, I can, I can take vengeance. Because the Bible says vengeance is my, I will repay. So he don't want you to go out and kill somebody. And it's your chance, oh, I got it out of my system. Oh, they made me mad. Oh, I've been wanting to get them for a long time. Oh, there's a chance. Like, oh, I'm going to give me a 30, 38, I don't know, the, the number of guns or whatever. And people like killing people just for no reason. Just kill them, like, kill them like nothing. Because one thing about it, the reason they keep doing so much killing, because they open that door of uh, a murder. When they open that door for murder and allow people to kill, thank you, Father, and abortions, when they did that abortion act and they passed that act, that opened up something up in the spirit, that opened up in the spirit, and people are killing babies. They have passed, had passed a law that the baby can be in the ninth trimester. Look it up. The ninth trimester, and they can take something and take it and hit the baby in the head, a full nine-month-old baby, and kill the baby. Nine trimester. And another one woman was running for president. She approved of it. Nine trimester. Look it up on YouTube. It's a full-size baby. And I'm taking this baby and I'm stabbing him in the head. You open the door up for them coming. That's why people are getting killed in the streets, killing people. And where they shoot them at? Straight in the head. Because you open that spirit. When you open that Pandora box up, it releases something in the air. It releases something in the atmosphere. A lot of these things are being released in our spirits. It releases in the air. And we don't know why all of a sudden I want to, why you want to get somebody, oh, I get them. Because they, re, they open, they sign these documents. They sign in high places. And it released that in the atmosphere. But if any man, but you got to come back to the altar. Come back to where you, where, you know, return back to God. And if it was a case that you did do things contrary, you did murder, you did do things, you're not past God. If you've done any of these things, you know, that you used to do, God can cleanse you. He can wash you. can purge yourself. You can say, God, you can go to you and God and just say, God, show me me. And sometimes he show you yourself. And like I said about this pastor, he said, God began to show him. He said, now you preaching and teaching and you laying hands and people getting healed. He said, well, Lord, how can I be laying hands and people getting healed and getting delivered? He said, because I love those souls. You didn't, well, nothing you did. Because you were still in sin. He said, if I would have came, you wouldn't have made it. A pastor from Uganda. And he said, wow, God. And he did think, when God brought it to him, he was undressing the women. He was thinking all kind of evil imaginations about what he would do to that woman. And I'm sure women think the same thing because these women are so bold now think the same thing about men or think the same thing about things that don't go right with them. I wish they were dead. I wish this or that would happen. Those are evil thoughts. You're thinking that, that you don't lie. You don't steal. You teach one, don't do it. But yet in your mind, you evilly imagine these things. You know, you got to repent. And you never repented for this stuff. And guess what? Your heart can turn cold. That's why he said the love of many will wax cold. When you go to church and people say, this happened to them, they don't have no feeling, no expression, no nothing because their heart has turned cold because they allowed the enemy to come in and bring that thing in their heart and they just don't care anymore. You got to get rid of that stuff. You got to lay aside that weight. That's that, that's that purging, 2 Timothy 2 and 21. Go right to it. He said, if any man will therefore will purge himself from these, ask God to show you what's on the inside. He shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Flee you for lust. When it come to your mind, when it entertain, entertain your mind, get away from it. Don't entertain it. Don't watch it on TV. What people say, TV. But we don't even have to worry about TV no more. We don't have to worry about no Playboy magazines no more. I know that people teach you that. That's 
okay, come on up, upgrade yourself, upgrade. When people ain't in no TV, ain't in a political magazine, they look, internet gives you pop-ups, Ben gives you pop-ups. So we, we ain't talking about the, the magazine, we ain't talking about the TV. They got other things that, that people can entice themselves and they got telephones and they can do everything they want to just on that phone. My baby helped uh, me to that. She said, Mama, somebody, they had things that they can do everything they want to do, but well, they ain't got to go to a peep show. They can do it right on the, te on the telephone. They got these telephones with doing everything on there. So upgrade and know what's going on in the earth. So you got to flee that stuff. You got to delete that. You got to get, get rid of those, uh, those apps. <laughs> I think about the name of called apps. You know, delete those apps. Flee you for lust. Follow after righteous faith, charity, peace to them that, that call upon the name of the Lord out of a pure heart. Amen. Praise God. Okay. <sighs> Thank you, Jesus. God wants us to get rid of it. Uh, oh, God, I just, got, I just, I just dropped it. the foundation. The foundation. Keep on staying with the foundation. Uh, uh, Ephesians 4 and 20, 22. It says, put away from you. Put away from among you. Okay, here, let, this is one that I do want. Psalm 66 and 18. But if you regard iniquity, how do you regard it? You hold on to it. Uh, I ain't got to listen to what they say. I ain't getting rid of my app. I'm doing what I want to do. I'm grown. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm under grace. <laughs> I'm under grace. But he said, if you regard iniquity in your heart, if you regard it, if you hold on to it, if you don't want to let go, the Lord will not hear me. And that's why when you pray long prayers and you think you'll be heard, you're praying amiss. Or if you're not careful, you're praying witchcraft prayers. Because rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft according to the word of God. So if it's, if it's rebellion as a sin of witchcraft and you're not going to do what the word says and you're praying long prayers, the Bible says to be heard in the synagogue, to thinking that your long prayers and your lot of words you're saying will be heard. And God said, well, we know God hear not sinners. But if any man be a worshiper of God and do his, his will, him he hears. And he said his ears are open to the cry of the righteous, but his face is against them that do evil. Well, who are you praying to? What you're praying? If you have an anger, out malice, and unforgiveness in your heart, who are you praying to? You're not praying to God, but we know God hears not sinners. St. John 9, 9, 31, for we know God hears not sinners, but even if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, can he hear? So he's not hearing you. But so you got to lay aside, you got to ask God to take it out, for verily God has heard me. He has attended to my voice of my prayer. He'll, he'll attend to the voice of the righteous. He'll hear my prayer. And though it's tarry, though you thinking that God hasn't heard you, though it tarry, wait for it. It's going to come to pass. But put away from you. Put away from you. Take, take time today. And sometimes, you know what, get you a little journal and begin to write down stuff. And as, as the word comes, and, and God, the Holy Ghost will show you. Because the Bible says the Holy Ghost will lead and guide you into all truth. And if you be honest with God, Holy Spirit, show me what I've done. Well, show me my error, my ways. He will begin to reveal to you some things, just like he's done me. And then I said, oh, God. Oh, God, search my heart. And when he began to search, you say, oh, God, stop. I don't want, oh, God. But he, he really showing you what you asked for. Be careful what you ask for, because as he began to show you, it's for you to take. He's showing it to you because it's not his will that you perish. So when God show you, oh, God, this is a good one. Oh, my God, it's a good one. When God show you, ask God to purge you. Ask God to take it out by the root. And Ephesians 6 and 10 is my favorite. Finally, my brethren, after all what I said, be strong in the Lord. Don't be weak. Don't, don't, don't wimp out. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel and the power of his might because I'm not standing in my own strength. I can't make it without God. I would be, we'd be like all men, most miserable. We could not make it without the Lord. I can't tell you and testify and say anything. If I, I teach others don't steal, but I'm still. I teach others don't commit fornication, but I'm doing it. I teach others don't do this, but I do this. I'd be worse, I'd be, I'd be worse, you know, God, God will hold me responsible. He said they can die in their sins, if he, uh, um, Ezekiel said, they can die in their sins, but their blood will be upon your hand because you didn't give a chance to warn them, and you, do it, and you teach others don't do it, and you do it, you're just as guilty. God's going to come back for me. 
But be strong. Let's be strong in the Lord. Let's finish strong. That's what I want to say. Let's finish 2016, 2017. Let's go on 2017. 20, the year 2017. Let's finish the year strong. Put on the whole arm of God. Not just a piece right here, a piece right there. The arm of the, protect your mind. Protect your heart. Don't let anybody come into your heart. Lord, guard your heart. The Bible says, guard your heart. For out of it flows the issues of life. Don't let anybody penetrate your heart and say anything in your heart. And you're so weak, everything they say affects your heart. Lord, put a guard, put a guard around my heart, God. Protect my mind, God. Keep my mind. You say, he whose mind stayed on me. You'll keep me in perfect peace. Guide my mind, Lord, God. Keep my mind. My mind want to wander off, Lord, God. Cast down that vain thought. Help me to keep my mind stayed on you. Meditate on the word day and night that I can be that tree planted by the river of the water. He said the innermost beings of these deep things that have, have been laying down dormant in you for years. Sometimes when they come up, it's just, it, it just, it's like you forget, but God will reveal it. He'll show you that you can stand, that when the time comes for you to stand, I want to stand. I want to make it. I don't want to have run this far. I don't want to have come this far and miss it now. I want to stand fast, so I'm preparing myself now. I'm putting on my armor now. I'm getting myself ready now. Like, like people are doing now, since they know that the economy and things are going to come, they're storing up water. They're storing up food. I think about PTL Club. Uh, uh, Pat, uh, what's his name? Baker, Jim Baker. Jim Baker got food stored up for, for a case Things about he already preparing for things to come. He's got water stored up. He's got different things stored up. Because I actually saw on CNN where I think it was Florida, if I'm not mistaken, where they had a tornado earthquake. I can't think of, was it Florida or why? I can't think. But anyway, the water, people were running into the stores getting the water, and the water was 30 something dollars a case. It was, the shelves was empty and the people were going getting the water. It was 30 some dollars a case because people did not store up the water and they put the prices up on water. And one young lady was in a tornado and she was in a hotel and all of a sudden she was, you know, because her house had, had, tore, had crumbled and she went into a hotel and when she went into a hotel, they upped the hotel from like $69, like a, a, a you know, a cheap hotel to like $600. And she was running outside the hotel, and they interviewed her. She said, I can't pay this. She had a baby on her hip. I can't pay this. They, they upped the hotel to $600 more. See, we, we, we got to prepare for evil times. Evil days are coming. We got to prepare, for, just like people prepare for water, which is true. Let's prepare ourselves for what's to come. But you know what? You cannot be left with your armor off. You cannot be left un, unprepared because evil days are coming. They're coming to America. They're coming. The harbinger that is not just not in vain. These are things that they already saying. You better listen to the prophets. He said, believe the prophets, so shall you prosper. You better leave, believe and listen. And that man, Jonathan Cain, on that prophet, that, that, that harbinger, he goes to, goes to PTL. He's a, he's a part of that. You got to know what's going on, what's about to happen. Well, now I'm going to keep my head in the, in the sand. My pastor said, sound. you know, you better search the news. You better search out things and know the children of Issachar, thank you, Father. Hear the, hear the word. The children of Issachar, they were blessed because they knew the times and the seasons. You better know the times and the seasons that you're living in. Amen. Praise God. And, and God will keep us. He'll keep us. Uh, if we want to be kept. If some don't believe. If some don't believe. If some don't believe to put away evil. Put away the evil you're doing from before my eyes. Flee you for lust. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Mortify means to kill it out. Lord, I got to get rid of this in 2017. Let that be my goal, that I put this aside, that I can lay aside this, that I can stop this, that I can, you know, cut this off. Begin to mortify, begin to cut things off in your life. And God will help you. If you make an effort, if you come to him, if you make that earnest effort, God is able to do it. Because, because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. The wrath of God, the reason things are coming, it's not because we're saying it. It's because people, people are disobedient. People are so hard-hearted. People are so set in their way. You can't tell them anything. They're headed, a lot of them are headed to destruction if they don't kill you first. <laughs> you know, they'll, they'll kill you on the road. They'll kill you passing by on the car. You could be in a, you, can, you can jump in front of them. They could jump in front of you. If you, if you miss, and, and you know what, if you, you don't allow them to get in sometimes, they'll pull out a gun and shoot your brains off. 
People, people are evil today. The evil, evil men are wax worse and worse. But you got to prepare to meet the Lord. You got to get yourself ready. Set your house in order because it's going to rain. If, if the word spoken and, and every disobedience receive a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape? We will not escape. It's not going to be an escape for us. We got to make ourselves ready. Consider him, Hebrews 12 and 3, that can endure such a contradiction of sinners against himself. We're going to go through with sinners. We're going to go through with people disliking, not agreeing, thinking us strange, and calling, saying all manner of evil against us falsely. They're going to come against us. They're going to slander the saints. They're going to put us down. They're going to call evil good and good evil. They're going to say you're in another spirit. You operate nothing. But you're going strictly with the word of God. You're standing on the word of God. You stand on his promises. You got to stand for God. You got to love not the world, the things that are in this world, because the world is so slowly fleeing away. You can't anchor yourself on the world, on this world, because we, this world is soon fleeing away. We got to have our minds set to be rapture ready to go home with the Lord when He comes for us. Having our uh, Second Timothy four and ten, having our loins girded about with truth and the breastplate of righteousness. And I thought about. Uh, 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 for Demas haven't, haven't forsaken me because he had loved this present world. There's some that's going to depart from you, going to go another way because they'd rather be, stay in this world. They'd rather have the things in this world. So I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. Just want to offer up a word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you, Daddy God. I thank you for this time of sharing. I thank you, God that I'm able to share your word with someone to touch their heart, touch their minds, oh God. Give them to know, God, time is not long, oh God. Help us to prepare ourselves. Begin in me, Lord. Let me be a living epistle read of men. Help me to prepare my mind, my heart, my soul, my spirit. Lay aside every weight, every sin. Unforgiveness got to go. Anything you're holding your heart against anybody, don't let it go off into the next year holding anything in your heart. Lord, give me to lay aside every weight, every sin. Reveal yourself to your people. Show us our shortcomings, what we need to come up to, and purge us with hyssop. Wash us in your blood. Cleanse our minds, our hearts, our souls, our spirits. Oh, God, that we can be ever ready to meet you when you come. When you come for us, oh, God, we want to be ready, God. We want to make it in, God. We don't want to have come this far and miss it, God. Help us to make it, God. Help us to stand fast in your word. It's, Meditate on your word day and night that we may be that tree planted by the river of the water. In the name of Jesus, God, we love you. We appreciate you. We honor you. We thank you for giving us this blessed opportunity. Many don't even have an opportunity to share the word. We thank you for the door, the, the, the door yet being open for us to share, the window. You yet got a little window open for us. We thank you for the window yet being open for us to share the word of God. Help, help your people. Help us to get ready. Get right. Get right, church. Let's go home. In Jesus' name, and I say so often, if I don't see you down here, I'll see you in the rapture. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Yeah.